Today I just want to have a bit of a word with you about painting skies. There's lots of different types of skies. Some of them are simple, some of them are complicated, and some should never be painted. And to start with, you've got the simplest type of sky imaginable. Now, you shouldn't discard this just because it's simple. And the reason is that a complicated sky in many paintings can take the viewer's eye away from where you really want it to be. If you've got a lot of detail in the foreground and a lot of detail everywhere, a complicated sky will make it look fussy. A nice simple sky with this one with just a tinge of blue at the top and practically pure white for the rest of the paper will make a huge difference to paintings like that. And here we have a slightly more complex sky than that. It's got a beautiful deep blue at the top. There's some fine wispy clouds in the middle. And then towards the bottom it shades to white. Now in fact that white isn't really white because what it is, is those clouds. And those clouds, because they exist right out to the horizon, you start to see them edge on. And this is what produces the effect of a sky like this being lighter or perhaps even a different colour at the horizon. Then we get on to more classical skies. Now at the top of this sky we've got some really wispy clouds and they're quite high up. Then going towards the middle we've got some nice cumulus clouds, the nice fluffy ones and you can see that they have shadows and they have highlights. This sort of sky is fairly typical of a summer's day in Britain. Now we've got some of the clouds that appear high up. These are very high altitude and you can see they're very wispy, they've got little trails, they've got forks, there's lines and these skies are quite difficult to paint however it's quite often in this country that you will actually see a sky that's composed of nothing else so it's worth getting to grips with it. And here's another classic sky over the Derbyshire Hills. So you can see it's mostly high altitude stuff. But it's a very interesting sky even so. The shapes. And if you look at that curl shape over the top of the hill, and that is quite often a feature that you do get over the tops of hills and mountains. Because the air coming up off the hill actually sculpts the clouds above it. Now we've got some more exotic skies. This slightly angry looking sky has the sun behind the clouds. Now you might think this would be difficult to paint but no it's not. Because at the end of the day all you have to do is copy the values and remember that the clouds actually have a halo around them that's caused by the sun and that halo goes all the way around them and that it's thicker on one side than the other. Now you'll notice in this sky another thing, well, another two things actually. The first thing you've probably noticed is that there's a contrail. There's an aircraft going across the middle of the sky. Now there's a big debate amongst painters as to whether you should paint contrails or not. What I say is if they contribute by giving some sort of perspective aid, or perhaps even pointing to an area of the painting you want the viewer's eye to go to, then leave them in or put them in. If they don't contribute, don't paint them. Now the other thing I want you to notice about this sky is the coloration. Find me blue. Everyone immediately thinks the sky is blue. There is no blue in this picture purple certainly, there's reds, there's yellows, there's whites, 
even a tiny hint of orange but no blue bit of green in the bottom left hand corner try to break out of the stereotype of having every sky you paint blue now here's a similar version but this sky has got some blue just to show you that it's not just an artifact of the um, way in which the picture was taken both of those pictures were taken on the mobile phone camera and this sky is very interesting because it's got a lot of cumulus there are clouds that are lit from beneath there's clouds that are lit from the side and there's standard clouds that are lit from the top quite a difficult sky to paint but very rewarding if you get it right now this is the sort of sky that you would paint if the sky was going to be the main feature of the painting and not just something that set the mood and here is a sort of sky that you would paint for setting a mood once again this is the Derbyshire Peak District and you can see that you have a lot of low lying cloud at the top of the picture and this cloud is black, it's rain clouds then in the distance it's opening up and you've actually got sunshine so you can see in this picture you have a storm overhead and towards the distance the weather is coming, good weather is coming and this sort of a sky is very good for setting a moody painting because it allows enough light into the landscape to see everything and yet it still gives you a nice dark band across the top and this painting also leads me to this picture I should say also leads me to talk about dark clouds now clouds appear in the sky in a sequence the lowest clouds have the most water in them and are therefore darker and as you get higher and higher and higher the clouds become wispier and wispier and they become whiter and whiter until eventually they're transparent and they start to recede into the actual sky itself and here's a little exercise for you one day when you're out walking around and you see a completely plain blue sky put on a pair of sun polarized sunglasses you'll be amazed polarized sunglasses allow you to pick the tiniest detail out of the sky and they will actually show you clouds in a sky where you didn't think there were any so all these people that walk around and say oh there's not a cloud in the sky actually they're wrong they just can't see them now we're getting on to some more exotic skies and this sky is right on the verge of what I would consider paintable now as you can see you have rays of light streaming out once again the sun is behind the clouds and that is a really good picture and a lot of artists will use the sun behind the clouds because it's very dramatic now you might ask it's fair enough in oils you can do all this because you simply paint over the top but how in watercolour could you achieve this effect and the answer is you paint it first without the rays then you put a piece of card or cardboard down with a straight edge you wet a brush you run the brush along the straight edge and then you wipe along with the tissue afterwards and what you do is you lift all the paint off in a straight line and it kind of blurs out it takes a couple of goes to get it right but it works really well that technique now here's one of the skies that you shouldn't paint uh, why do I say that? well the quick answer is this is a photograph so you would believe it you would believe you have nice little wispy clouds underneath this big sculpted cloud at the top and then a clear sky at the right and there's green down at the horizon and you believe that because you know it's a photograph you try painting it the viewer will simply refuse to believe that that sort of sky exists and they'll come away saying that guy's no good he can't paint skies
Now you've got another thing. <laughs> Lots of strange things can happen in real skies, and this is one of them. For the life of me, I cannot figure out what has produced that nice double helix spiral shape like a piece of DNA in the middle of the sky. I can't figure out what's done that, but it's there. Would I paint it? Hell no, because nobody would believe it. The same goes for clouds that are shaped like unicorns, rhinoceroses, turtles. Try and avoid anything that looks weird or strange in the sky, although there are weird or strange things up there. It's best not to put them in your painting. Well, that's it for now. Um, I'm going to be doing a series of videos on painting skies with some actual real painting in there. Um, they're going to be watercolour because of time constraints, not oil. Um, I hope you watch them and enjoy them. Thank you.